Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Unreal Hero and we have another Razer keyboard lighting design for you guys. This design has been requested by lots of people on my channel and I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the guys that did request this lighting profile because it is a good one and we have a good one for you guys today. Before we get into the keyboard lighting design, I would like to say that I am giving away this Razer Black Widow keyboard that you see on the table behind me. I am going to be giving it away on my Twitter, so be sure to go over to my Twitter and check out how you can enter to win that Razer Black Widow keyboard for the Cyberpunk 2077 Razer Chroma profile design. There will be links in the description below where you guys can go to my website and download it and have it on your Razer Chroma devices as well. But if you guys want to learn how to do it, you guys want to learn how to use Razer Synapse Studio a little bit, maybe make your own lighting designs, then I'm going to show you exactly how I made this design and we're going to get right into it right now. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go. All right, guys, here we go with the Cyberpunk 2077 design. It's going to start you out with spectrum cycling on all of your lighting zones and just double click any one of those lighting zones to select all of that effect. We're going to select our color drop down here and we're going to choose this green pattern right here, this green and black pattern. With the first node here, we're going to make that yellow. We're going to drop the brightness down way dark. I'm going to go with this hex code right here, 262600. And we're just going to copy that. And now every other node in this color gradient right here, we're going to click on it and we're just going to paste that effect color in there. Skip another one, paste the, the effect in there. And the last node, we'll paste that in. Now we're going to go back to the second node here and we're going to make this cyan or light blue. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drop this really dark and we're going to copy this hex code here, 002829. Once again, paste it in every other color node. So this will give us a faint blue and yellow background coloring for all of our devices, which is what we want to start out with. The next layer I'm going to choose is actually just a fire layer. And with this fire effect, we're going to select only the outer ring of our Huntsman Elite keyboard if you have a Huntsman Elite. If you don't, you can skip the fire effects step. For our hot color, we're gonna choose the light blue. And for our cold color, we're going to choose the yellow. Now for our next layers, we're going to be using four different wave layers to be able to make the 2077 effect. So first we're going to add a wave layer and with this wave layer we are going to select only our keys on our keyboard and we're going to click on our color drop down and we're going to choose this five node pattern right here and for this first layer what we're going to do is we're going to just make this first node yellow the second node we're also going to make yellow and after we change the color of our second node we're going to hit this plus sign and we're gonna make this new node invisible. And we're gonna drag that over to the yellow and the rest of the nodes on our keyboard are going to be invisible. So just keep them right where they're at and we're just, we're just gonna make them invisible. So you have two yellow nodes and the rest are invisible just like this. Click off of that. We're gonna make our width percentage 400% and that's all we're doing for this layer. Now we're going to hit the save button real quick and then right click on the wave layer that you just had up there and hit duplicate layer. Now we're gonna go click on this new wave layer that we have and we're gonna double click on our keys on our keyboard. I'm just gonna hold control and zoom into my keyboard here so that we get a better look. And now with all of your keys selected on your keyboard, we're gonna click on our color drop down once again and we're now going to delete this invisible node, this the one that we made previously. We're gonna delete that. This first node, we're gonna make that invisible and we can drag that over. This yellow node, we're going to make light blue. This third node right here, we're also going to make light blue and then we're just gonna hit this addition sign, drag it next to the other blue one We'll make it invisible. This is all we're gonna do for that. Click off of there. This looks perfect. I'm gonna hit save. Now I'm gonna right click on this layer and we're gonna duplicate that one. Now with this new wave layer, 
Once again, we're gonna click on our keys, click on our color drop down, and we can delete this new node that we made right here. We can also delete this first node right here. And we're gonna take this node, drag it next to that blue one, make that invisible. We're gonna change the blue node to yellow. We're gonna make this third node right here also yellow. We're gonna hit the addition symbol. This new node, we're gonna drag it up close to that yellow one and make that invisible. So as you can kind of see or kind of tell, with these wave layers that we're adding in, each one represents a quarter of the gradient bar and it alternates yellow, blue, yellow, blue. Click off of that, we'll hit save. Once again, duplicate the wave layer, click on the new one, double click the keys, and we're going to select our gradient bar here, delete this new node we made right here. This last node we're going to make light blue. This yellow node right here, we're also going to make light blue. We're gonna take this first node that's invisible and delete that. This yellow node, we're gonna drag it up next to the light blue one and make that invisible. So now you can see your keyboard should alternate blue and yellow and a wave pattern that goes to the right on your keyboard. So this top layer that we have at the top of our effect layers here, we're gonna rename that to two. We're gonna rename the second one to zero. We're gonna rename this third one to seven. And this last one, we're gonna rename to seven, seven. Okay, just like that. And now we're gonna go to the two layer. Double click on a key to select all of your keys here. We're gonna click on this color drop down, and I'm actually going to click on these nodes and we're going to change the brightness down to real low. Okay, so I have 002B2B. And we're just gonna copy that and I'm gonna change this blue node as well. Change that to the same. And we're gonna hit save. We're also going to go to the seven effect layer, double click on a key, click on your color drop down, and change these blue nodes to that same dark blue color. Just paste in the hex code in there for those. I'm also going to do the same thing with the yellow. So I'm gonna click on the zero effect layer, double click on a key, click on my color drop down, change my first yellow node here to be really dark. My hex code is 262600. I'm gonna double click on that and copy it. I'm gonna paste that on my other yellow one. Now I'm gonna to go to my 77 effect layer that we made over here. Double click on a key. Click on my color drop down. I'm gonna change these two bright yellow nodes to be that dark yellow as well. So now that you've gone and done that, you can see I have just a really dark yellow and a really dark blue wave going on. And so for now, we're gonna be done with these layers, but we're gonna come back to them to make our numbers. So next, we're going to add a wheel effect. So click on this wheel add effect layer here. And with this new wheel layer selected, we're going to select the corners of our keyboard. I'm just gonna hold control and start selecting some keys right here. So here I've selected some keys on the lower left corner of my keyboard and the upper right corner of my keyboard. And I'm just gonna click on my color drop down here and I'm going to choose this five node pattern right here. And this first node I'm going to make yellow. The second node I'm going to make the light blue. Third node, yellow. Fourth node, light blue. And last node is going to be yellow. Just like that, I'm gonna click off of there. Now I'm going to select this center point icon and I'm gonna make my center point be in the middle of my keyboard here. And so now that we've kind of created this boundary in the middle of our keyboard, we know where we can put our numbers now. So I'm gonna go back to my two layer. And with my two layer selected, I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna select my control key down here in the bottom left. And I'm going to select my volume key right here in the upper right. If you don't have the media keys, that's fine. Just go ahead and select whatever your upper right most key is on your keyboard. And now while also holding control, we're going to select out the shape of our two. So this is the keys I chose for the shape of my two. So with those keys selected, we're gonna click on our color drop down, 
and we're gonna contrast with the color that's already there. So this is a dark blue. So we're going to make this bright yellow. And the other node we're gonna change to bright yellow as well. We're gonna click on our zero layer and same thing. Hold control, select your control key, select your media key or your upper right most key. And now we're going to also select out the shape of our zero. So here I chose these keys for the shape of my zero. I'm gonna click on my color dropdown and this originally is a dark yellow, but we're gonna change that to bright light blue and a bright light blue for the other node. We're gonna click on our seven layer. We're gonna hold control, select the control key, media key. We're gonna select out the shape of a seven here. These are the keys that I chose for the shape of my seven. Click on our color dropdown. We're gonna change it from a dark blue to a light yellow and a light yellow, okay? Click on our 77 layer, hold control, select the control key, select the media key, select out the shape of our seven again. This time we're gonna click on our color dropdown. We're gonna change it from a dark yellow to a light blue. Dark yellow, light blue. And as you can see, as the wave passes through, it switches from a two to a zero, to a seven, to a seven, to fit our Cyberpunk 2077 theme for this keyboard lighting design. So the next thing we're gonna do with our keyboard is we're going to add an audio meter to it. And what we're gonna do with this audio meter is we're going to make it change our keyboard so that it shows the initials CP for Cyberpunk. With this audio meter layer selected, we're gonna click all of our keys on our keyboard. We're going to change our boost to 1.5 or 1.75. That's what works best on mine. We're not gonna check auto. We're gonna leave decay alone and we're gonna click on our color drop down here. And we're gonna choose this two node pattern right here. So this white, so this black and green pattern. We're gonna start by moving this node all the way up here towards the top and we're just going to pinch these two nodes together right here so that there's a small portion left on the right side. So we're going to change these two nodes to a light blue and the node on the left, we're going to make it dark. Next, we're going to hold control and we're gonna deselect this top row on, of our keyboard. We're gonna click on our color dropdown and we're just gonna drag these a little bit over to the left, a little bit over to the left. Hold control, deselect the next row, Click on your color drop down, drag these over a little bit, drag these over a little bit. Hold control, deselect the next row, click your color drop down, drag them over. Deselect the next row, drag them over. Deselect the next row, and drag them over. So now that that's done, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a temporary static layer just to kind of give us a guideline of where we want our initials. So I'm going to hold control and I'm gonna select out some keys that make the shape of a C and select out some keys that make the shape of a P. So right here, I've selected out some keys. You see CP in there and I'm just going to make those red for right now, okay? And we're gonna go back to our audio meter layer and we're gonna work row by row. And we're going to select this top row here. I'm gonna click on the color drop down. and I'm gonna change the, the brighter blue to yellow. And I'm gonna change this, this darker blue also to yellow, but this darker one, I'm going to make a dark yellow. We're gonna copy this hex code because we're gonna use it again. And we're gonna go to our next row down. So we're gonna select this red key and these three red keys. I'm gonna click on our color drop down. We're going to choose this darker blue and we're gonna paste in that darker yellow hex code that we copied and the bright blue we're going to make yellow. Next row down, same thing. Hold control and select the red keys here. Click on our color drop down, paste in the hex code for the dark color and choose yellow for the brighter one. Same thing on the next line. And you're just gonna do that for each line as you go down to swap out the blue and make it yellow. So now that we've changed our audio meter layer, we can delete the static layer because we only use that for a guideline. So now whenever you play any kind of music on your computer, 
it will start to take over your lighting and make a CP initialed background for your keyboard lighting design. Also, this audio meter, you want it to react underneath your wheel effect that you have going on in the corners. So make sure you take this audio meter and drag it underneath your wheel effect. You want your wheel effect to take a higher priority than the audio meter if you want the corners to still be there when the audio is playing. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. For our other peripherals, if you guys have additional devices that you guys want to add effects to, I'm gonna show you how I did mine. So with the two layer of your four other devices that you guys might be using in studio, I'm gonna show you guys how I changed mine. So click on your two effect layer over here and we're going to select the lower left portion of all of our additional devices. I'm gonna select the lower left portion of my Razer Tartarus V2, lower left portion of my Firefly, lower left portion of my Razer Base Station, lower left portion of both of my Nomo speakers, and I'm also gonna select my docking station here. And on my mouse, I'm also gonna select the left side of my Basilisk Ultimate. So with these selected, I'm gonna click on my color drop down, and I'm gonna choose this three node pattern right here. Yellow in the first node, yellow in the last node, and I'm gonna put that light blue right in the middle. We're gonna change our angle to 135 degrees here, just like that, and now for the upper right portion of the keyboard, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna actually copy what we did with this effect, just copy that effect. And we're gonna select the upper right portion of all of our additional devices. And we're just gonna paste the effect that we did previously in there, but we're gonna change our angle up to 315 degrees. If you guys have the light strips, I'm gonna select my two layer and I'm gonna select my light strips here. I'm gonna click on my color drop down. I'm also going to choose this three node pattern. Do the same thing, I'm gonna do yellow on the outsides and blue on the inside, but I'm gonna make these a little bit darker because the LED strips are kind of bright. So I like to make mine a little bit dim. So I'm gonna copy the effect I made here, paste that into my other yellow one, and now I'm gonna change my light blue and I'm gonna make that darker. And I'm gonna choose the split option here. So now my LED strips kind of have a splitting yellow and blue wave on them as well. That's gonna do it for the how-to part of this video, guys. Here's the showcase so that you guys can see what it looks like outside of the studio software. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe and bell icon. That way you guys don't miss out on future Razer keyboard lighting design. And please don't be afraid to leave a comment in the comment section below telling me what you guys might wanna see on a Razer Chroma keyboard. I always look at your guys' comments and I get the majority of my ideas from what you guys suggest. So please, if you have a good idea, don't be afraid, leave a comment. You can also contact me on my social media accounts twitter and instagram you guys definitely want to follow me on my social media accounts because i'm always putting up teasers of upcoming videos as well as doing giveaways on those platforms that's going to do it for this one guys thank you guys so much for watching this video and i'll see you guys in the next one